turnover and something, and this is the one that actually resulted in a goal for his team. He's deceptively quick off yep. the mark. He can pick up 20 quickly. Now, after all this, is a free kick to the Bulldogs. I tell you what, we're nearly at half time. Watch what happens oh, at half time. So Brad Johnson's been down. down behind play. And he's not well. No, nah, Barnsley sort of ran into him with the long. Oh, Scotty oh, Wine just got him. Go at it. Big goes. Giving him a bell. It's on. He is having a big, big go. Moorcroft's come off the bench. He just for this. wanted to have a go at Liver Moorcroft. He's came in and taken him on. Well, could you think of two teams better than have a go? I mean, he is. Uh, word, he can't stand up, Brad Johnson. Unfortunately, I think he's been concussed. He was. He had the jelly legs when he got up. Did you see it, Dipper? No, I didn't see it, Bruce. No, not at all. Oh, look at that. Freddie Hook and Lloyd having a go at it. The doggies have got him rattled here. Have we got a second half coming up? Gee, I think he's been split open, Liver. He wants a report. He wants somebody's game put off what, by them being reported. Peggy, do you reckon they're going to come out firing bullets after half time? Oh, this is a game of footy and half. See, Brad Johnson's really angry down here. The Dodgers are trying to keep him away. He just wants uh, Terry revenge. Zimmerman. Look at Libba going over to the umpires and having a talk to him. It's still going down here, boys. This is unbelievable. I tell you what, it would be interesting to see who Brad Johnson ran to right now if they let him run to somebody. I tell you what, wouldn't they? Be that one I don't think he could run, Bruce. Let's have a look and see if we can find out what happened to Johnson. Now, there's uh, Johnson. Two was oh, got his players here, Bruce, on the wing down here. I just have a word to him. Now, that, that replay there didn't look malicious. No. We didn't see the whole picture. Well, you haven't seen where Barnes's eyes were looking. Yep. If Barnes has looked at him, so he's, Johnson's, he's meant to get him. He's Johnson's him gone off. off, and Terry Wallace has brought everybody together. Here's, it might be oh, he's athlete. picked him off. He has picked him off. But He's still, watched him all the way there. But still, Dermot, it wasn't... Where was the ball? It, it, the ball's nowhere, and he's hit him with the point of his shoulder. Just listen to this crowd for one moment. This is unbelievable stuff. Look at this man. Well, I'm telling you, Steve Alessio has been asked to do a job tonight. Oh. I reckon he'd better get himself in form. One of the trainers just hosed that bloke down with water as he went by. The bloke that was giving him a spray over the top. This is is I want, the I want that bloke up here at half time. <laughs> no, no, thank you, Bruce. Oh, well, how hot is it? It's the water on his shoulder. here and it's all square. <laughs> Well, an extraordinary opening half. Well, what a half of footy. We had so much to talk about before the big brawl. The tactics of uh, the Bulldogs and the Bombers. This was a counter-attack in the first quarter. They needed this. Lloyd and Long have been terrific together tonight. And Lloyd banging it through against the flight. But at half-time, the Bulldogs came back strongly to square it all up in more ways than one at half-time. It's seven goals, three apiece. Well... As I said, I thought we had plenty to talk about, but in the last minute it all changed. Here's Barnes and taking out Johnson. Now that is, that is big time. I know Jason and I have had some stern words off air. That is big time. Yeah, but this he wasn't is what looking at him at the point of contact yet. I'm oh. just saying, look, I know it was illegal, but I That's don't weeks. think... It's It's weeks. I don't it's, think it's it big was weeks. as callous as a lot of other things we've seen happen in this game, but it did erupt straight after that. He's so, looking at a stretch. No, no doubt about it. Well, it's the sort of thing they've been doing all night, though. They bump into each other, they niggle, they, they, they try to test each other at every opportunity. He, he worked out the line, saw where he was coming, then he looked back at the ball and used his body to hit him. Forget, I'm not trying to put him in. I'm just commenting on what I've seen, and I'm an expert in the tribunal. He's looking at minimum of two. That's, that's, that's what a, you've just put him I'm in. Not, I'm, that's, but it, that's what I've seen. From what I know, if they have to look at it. He's in big trouble. What about Fletcher's, uh, I know I'm changing the subject, what about Fletcher's ability to, to go forward and kick long goals? Oh, he's been fantastic. I mean, Jason, he's just run out and he jumped over the pack at that stage, didn't he? They kicked the ball to his own. And that's a weapon, that right boot. He's going to be a handy player to have there because the way the game's being structured, you're not taking many marks inside, you're attacking 50. So the players that can kick it from 50 or 55 are invaluable, and he did that. I'm dying to go down to you, Hutto. Hutto, what is the feeling down there in the Bombers' well, room? Amazing feeling down here. Obviously, as, as they were coming off the ground, they were just the officials and coaches were just trying to come in and just cool the players' heads. In fact, by the time they got in, they are actually pretty cool, amazingly, but talking it up and just saying they have to obviously go out there and make them pay on the field. Uh, and a couple of people, a couple of the in James Heard, in fact, asking just what happened in the incident. So uh, a little, a fair bit of confusion raining down here. And I must say, being out there on the ground was quite amazing and you really felt like things could have got completely out of hand at one stage. Yeah, it felt out of 
of control like we haven't seen for a long time in a match. Hello, see you after half time. In a moment, we're going to give you the Mitre 10 answer from last week, but next week is the big announcement of the big competition, including a trip for two to Ireland. So be watching for sure next week for that Mitre 10. Here's last week's answer. Welcome back. Well, it's still a buzz here. What about that last quarter? They kicked the last five goals of the game, the Bulldogs, to do what we thought might be impossible, and that's to beat the Bombers in the year 2000. 20 straight for the Bombers. Their great run comes to an end. Fletcher, ironically, in the end, a couple of big mistakes. Turnovers. Lloyd and Blumfield, 3-2-2. And then Colin Nuke, a couple of last quarter goals. Johnson was just terrific. Garlic and Grant was arguably the best man on the ground, but I'm not giving the votes. There's the Bombers behind us. It's the first time they've uh, lost a game. In fact, uh, they'd won 34 out of 36 going on. They looked home. They got three and a half goals in front. There was one turnover in the last quarter. Ramanas has kicked it up. I mean, you're not going to blame Ramanas, but it was an awkward kick, a poor kick, and it, they were able to get something out of it, the doggies. Yeah, they just scrounged it forward, didn't they? I mean, Eagledon was going up and down on the spot by then, but just a clever little tap out by hand, and then the foot pass out into space for Colin Hook. They utilised the ball, possession of the ball, as good as any team possibly could. Got three Colin Hook and two of them in the last quarter, so he did his job. What about, what about Chris Grant? Uh, if you've ever seen somebody lead from the front tonight, this man did. Oh, he was brilliant. He, uh, well, he started briefly in attack, then he went down back and he came forward when the game had to be won. And what about that for the clincher? That was after a second error by Dustin Fletcher, a little scrimmage near the boundary, kicked it out in the full. It was originally picked up uh, by another player and then Collinuk, Collinuk, Collinuk. and then it was told, no, Chris Grant, it's yours. How happy are they that the umpire said, Chris, you take it? <laughs> That's what? his preferred option, the run around and slot yeah. across the left. A lot of side. other players would have tried to kick a banana. Yeah. He actually got that soft goal late in the last quarter. They actually got them going from the boundary throwing. Yep. Now here's the final siren and uh, boy, it all broke loose after this. I Emotion we, spilled out of here. We probably forgot the fact that Rowan Smith kicked the goal after the siren. Yeah. We were just flabbergasted the fact that the run had come to an end and the Bulldogs had pulled off an incredible victory. So emotions flowing here on both sides, aren't they? The, the doggies have done the impossible. They've won their way into the eight. I mean, it's the real knockout play. You take the Bombers and you get them to the eight in the one night. You see the professionalism there too, Sean Wellman. He's still calling somebody to get back onto the Look goal line. Grant Johnson. And we'll see Jono come up. He's, he's in, inside the forward 50 at this stage. And right about now, he's run the length of the ground. And he is talking to somebody <laughs> fast. Normally... That spot before, Jason. I think you went once. You go down there and you say, Oh, mate, I try to get the reporter during the game, but I'll look after you at the tribunal. There wasn't any of that. I've got a feeling he agrees with you. I think he put two fingers up. <laughs> I think he agrees with you. Yeah, um, well, Barnsley's a great story, and I yeah. hope the best happens for him, but geez, it looks bad. As bad as my yep. English. Well, that, all, that, that <laughs> I know exactly what you mean. That all happened because of the big blue at half time. Yeah. Johnson was taken out by Barnes and uh, then all this uh, just let loose. And like Hutto said, I felt for a moment that this was getting right out of control. We haven't seen anything like this for a long time. No, and the doggies are involved in a few yeah. of them, but that's the way they play with their emotion. How do you reckon the AFL will react to that? They're going to be well, they've been very severe on the they're melees, haven't they? And there are going to be some huge fines imposed as a result of that half-time melee. There was a lot in there. Yep, no there won't be too many that weren't in it either. I I, one thing I did say, we were talking off-air at half-time, and I said if they have to hand over a big cheque and come away with a win, the dog it'll be sour, but I reckon they'll wear it. Yep. Mm. Michael Long was good, wasn't he? He took the ball into the forward 50 uh, on about a dozen occasions tonight. His body movement was fantastic, Jason. Almost turned the clock back about four or five years, I thought, with the way he was able to move his body, his pace was up, his sidestepping was fantastic. Look, he was, he was brilliant, his disposal was excellent as well. He ran himself into the ground and, and his yeah. forward work, his attacking work was that much of a toll on his, uh, on his fitness that he actually got found wanting a couple of times going the other way because he'd given so much of himself. Watch this one here. His disposal was first class. Nathan Brown's game. I thought he was exceptional. Gee, the first three quarters he was clearly best man on the ground. But the thing was, because the doggies flooded back, they had like eight, ten guys in defence, he was the bloke running forward who had to make the first long possession coming out of the back line really count. Otherwise it goes back and every time it comes, comes back at them. So he had to really make that count and I thought he used it, not just good, brilliantly. By playing Chris Grant down back for most of the match, Trent Bartlett became, I guess, the tall forward option for the doggies. How did you think he went? He did a couple of clever things. He didn't get as much of the ball as probably anyone would like in a game of football, but he utilised his possessions well. Now, that was very clever. He sprinted away. That was a, a case in 
a point in question of uh, Michael Long not quite having the fitness to go with him. That was a crucial mark. He ended up going off with the blood rule and Colney will kick the goal, but he did his part for the Bulldogs tonight. No doubt. Let's go down. Hutto's got David Smorgan, who's the president of uh, the Western Bulldogs. Thanks, Bruce. Players still locked away, but David, what a, what a performance. It was one of the great Bulldog performances, and uh, full credit to Terry, the whole of the coaching staff, and every one of those 22 players. They all did something tonight. And uh, I don't think there's a better club with the backs to the wall and the Bulldogs because we really come out and we give 100%. And uh, I'm just thrilled off for everybody tonight. Do you think you could win going in tonight? Yes, uh, we did. Uh, we thought that uh, our experience of beating Carlton, where we were, the game plan had to be changed, and uh, we got over the line last week against Collingwood, but we were quietly confident tonight. I mean, Essendon were coming off the big game last week, and we love a challenge. And uh, we're a club that's always thrived on challenges, and there was no bigger challenge to knock off the club that's won 20 games in a row. Terry's still locked away with the players. He's not adding another zero onto his new contract, is he? I think he did that when the siren, uh, siren went, but no. I think Terry's reminding the guys of uh, what's involved now, that we look as though we're now going to get in the finals. And uh, we as a club have still got a number of things to do. And just when everyone writes us off, we bark back. And we're going to bark back big and loud. Well done. Thanks, yeah. Hutto. Back to you, well, well done, Hutto. Well done, David Sport. He's back to the wall. Well tonight, yep. didn't they? Bucks of the wall, there is not a better team, and they can't go out of the eight. They are in there for good in 2000. So they've done it the hard way this year, but they're doing it well, and they might be very dangerous. A break more from Colonial right after this.